What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the new Pixelbook Go. This is Google's latest and greatest Chromebook with a fresh redesign, upgraded specs, and a lower, but still probably too high price tag for what you're getting, but we'll talk about that in just a bit. If you aren't already familiar with Chromebooks, they could best be described as a laptop alternative that runs Google's own unique operating system called Chrome OS, with basic and somewhat limited functionality when compared to a standard Windows laptop or MacBook. The Pixelbook Go is Google's own flagship Chromebook, but other hardware companies like HP, Lenovo, and Asus, among other companies, also sell Chromebooks too. It's a very web browser focused device centered around Google Chrome and Google's own services, with some other Android apps sprinkled in. And honestly, it might be a decent alternative for folks whose main computer usage includes casual web browsing and emailing, light document editing, media consumption like videos and movies, and enjoying the same kinds of apps you might use every day on your phone. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything the Pixelbook Go has to offer, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to decide whether this thing is the right device for you. First up, let's talk about its looks. Physically, this is a really great looking laptop. It's magnesium matte black painted housing and frame that's pretty sharp, and overall, it's a super lightweight, but also very premium feeling device, which I think is hard to get right, but Google definitely nailed it. It's also super thin, about 13.4 millimeters or half an inch, and that textured design on the underside gives you a nice grip to hold on to. All this means is that the Pixelbook Go, I think, is perfect for taking with you on the go, as it should be. It's a great combination of portability without compromising on design or style or materials, and you can even use it comfortably in your hands if you find yourself without a place to set it down for a moment. Physically, there isn't anything I'd change with this laptop. Flipping open the lid, you'll see that the Pixelbook Go is a 13.3 inch device, just the one screen size to choose from, and once again, there's not a whole lot I changed here either. It's a relatively bright, full HD 1080p display with a glossy finish that catches some glare, but in nearly all indoor conditions, that shouldn't be too distracting. Personally, coming from a MacBook Pro, a glossy display is just something that I'm used to. And the screen on the Pixelbook Go is even a touchscreen display, which might be enticing to some people. Honestly though, I sort of forgot it even had that, but it works really well. It's super accurate, multi-touch support, but not all all that useful since this is a fully built one piece laptop. It's not like a convertible tablet or flexible notebook or anything like that. And there's just something about getting that glossy screen all smudged and fingerprinty that I don't like. The display is also perfect for checking out today's video sponsor, bookmark.com. If you're trying to create an online presence for yourself or your business this year, or maybe you'd like to just build a simple website but don't know where to start, Bookmark is an easy to use and completely free website builder powered by AI. You can create a professional looking website in just a matter of minutes by answering seven simple questions and letting Ada, Bookmark's artificial intelligence design assistant, do all the rest. There's hundreds of themes and styles to choose from, including e-commerce integration to take your business to the next level, and it can all be done with no programming or coding skills required. If you're interested in getting a jump start on building your online presence in 2019 with a free and easy to use website builder, check out the link in the video description to bookmark.com to learn more, and thanks so much again to Bookmark for making today's video possible. Staying on the topic of the build, the Pixelbook Go offers some new ultra quiet keys that are actually really good too. There's not too much travel, but it's still a responsive and accurate typing experience that's comfortable and easy to work with. The keyboard setup is a bit custom to this laptop with a dedicated Google Assistant button and a couple other little quirks you have to get used to, but all in all, the typing experience is pretty much on point. The same can be said about the trackpad too. It's a large glass trackpad with plenty of room to maneuver and a very responsive click that's even louder than the keyboard actually. It's it's accurate, comfortable, easy to use, and probably rivals any other trackpad you can think of, even on the newest and most expensive laptops. And when you flip open or close the Pixelbook Go, you'll experience a firm but very smooth and well-balanced hinge that allows you to pop open the Chromebook with one touch. The setup here again just feels very premium, and overall, the Pixelbook Go offers stellar hardware from start to finish. The final sort of feature or talking point I want to mention that's nothing but positive on the Pixelbook Go is the speaker setup. You've got dual upward facing side speakers that get way louder than you'd expect, and they sound pretty great coming from such a small, 
thin and light device. It's tough to do them justice in a video like this, but here's just a quick sample so you can get an idea. <laughs> Once again, I think physically the Pixelbook Go just has a lot going for it, and anyone who has the opportunity to handle this device in person would agree that it's a great looking, premium feeling device. Unfortunately though, looks and designs aren't everything. Obviously something like this still has to offer the features and capabilities you need to get your work done. And this is where things start to go downhill. Now, yes, it is sort of unfair to compare any Chromebook to a Windows laptop or Apple MacBook, since they're not really in the same ballpark. But I'd argue that with the Pixelbook Go, Google seems to be trying to sort of offer up that comparison anyway, and the Pixelbook Go just falls short. First off, let's talk ports. You've got a headphone jack and two standard USB-C ports. That's it. No Thunderbolt, no SD card, no HDMI, no USB-A, nothing. But I guess the thing is, since this is a Chromebook after all, Technically, the I.O. limitations go hand in hand with the software limitations anyway. The software on the new Pixelbook Go, and any Chromebook for that matter, is Google's Chrome OS. And the best way I can describe it to folks who've never experienced it yet is that it's sort of like if the only app on your computer was Google Chrome. That's kind of the idea here. Chrome is your web browser. And most of the additional apps and things that are included are Google-centric, like Gmail and Google Docs and Google Drive and that sort of stuff. Sure, the computer has a file management system, and yes, you can sort of kind of run some Linux apps, but that goes beyond what most people would probably end up doing with this thing anyway. Now, there is a Google Play Store, which allows you to install a bunch of other apps and games and things, but you're sort of limited here once again. A lot of the simple apps and games that run on your phone will run in a similar capacity or about the same on your Pixelbook Go, but some more intense games, like Call of Duty Mobile, for example, example, just won't work at all. And beyond that, Chrome OS doesn't offer any professional grade apps or any third party programs at all, really. So you can't get the Microsoft Office suite of programs like Word or Excel or PowerPoint, for example you're stuck using Google Docs. You can't use any of Adobe's professional software, like Photoshop, either. If there are any other standalone programs that you currently use on your computer, chances are they won't be available on a Chromebook like the Pixelbook Go. Or if it is, it's likely a watered down version from the Play Store if it's available. On the plus side, when you are using those very basic apps or just browsing the web, you can expect some excellent battery life. Google says up to 12 hours on a single charge. I get around 10 since I use full brightness at all times, but either way, you'll get a day's work and then some without having to worry. And if you need to juice up quickly, the USB charger can give you two hours of life with just 20 minutes plugged in. And through those hours and hours of use, the things you can do on the Pixelbook Go obviously are all pretty good. If you're deeply involved in Google's ecosystem already and you utilize all those apps and online services, you'll feel right at home on this laptop. And if all you're going to do is browse the web, answer emails, run a few basic programs, and maybe video chat with friends, which you can do utilizing the surprisingly good 1080p webcam, then you have the laptop for your needs for sure. But the thing is, Google now has sort of mismatched what you get with the Pixelbook Go with what you get with the Pixelbook Go. And what I mean by that confusing statement is that on the inside, Google for some reason offers a myriad of configuration options, each increasing in price pretty substantially for a laptop that at the end of the day still basically just browses the web. At $649, you get a Chromebook with a somewhat dated, but still usable Intel Core M3 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a measly 64 gigabytes of internal storage, which I guess the cloud is a thing, and if you use Google Drive, you're probably okay. All in all, it's not a terrible configuration when considering the capabilities, but this version I have here in front of me is the Intel Core i5 model with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, and it sells for $800. $149. And you can go even higher than that. There's an i7 model with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 
256 gigabytes of storage and a 4K display for $1,400 for a Chromebook. This is where things just don't make a whole lot of sense. Google built a super nice portable computer with a fairly limited OS, but that for some reason can also be upgraded to more than twice the price with internal specs that realistically you probably can't utilize given the software. There are full featured Windows laptops, even MacBooks that are a couple years old that can do more and offer more value and they come at a cheaper price. The thing is, I really do like the Pixelbook Go. I like Chromebooks in general. I think the idea behind them is brilliant. It's a device that's not quite a computer, but still generally lets people do a lot with a full featured web browser and plenty of capabilities and apps and services to get the job done. But the price, even at $649, makes us a tough sell. And that's sort of been the problem with all of Google's tablets and laptops in recent years. And don't even get me started on specking this thing up. That should not even be a consideration. All in all, I want to like the Pixelbook Go, I really do. At maybe $400 or even $500, Google might have cracked the code on offering certain groups of people the right laptop for their needs. But for now, Google's flagship hardware device, I think, is a pass. But I'll be looking out for some Black Friday or Cyber Monday deals that might make it a more attractive purchase. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of the new Pixelbook Go in the comments down below. If you would use it, if you think it's a good value, or if you think you'll pass on it too. Also, be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.